Today's episode is brought to you by Skillshare. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Bad Flashes, still taking place in said white void. Today's episode is gonna be really great. It's gonna be probably one of the best episodes you will ever see ever of television history slash YouTube hi Just kidding, no, it, it, it will actually be very boring. It's one of the most boringest things that will ever grace your ear holes. Today, I'll be walking you through how I organize, store, and label my film negatives, both physically and inside the computer. Like I said, today's gonna be a doozy, so I hope you're ready to take copious notes. And I'm sorry, there will be a quiz. Let's get into it. Drinking my topo for energy. Drinking my topo for energy. But first things first, how do we get to this exact moment? Now, let's rock and roll. So, you'll need a few things. You'll need a binder to store your negatives in. You'll also need some print files to keep your negatives safe and secure, just like your emotional baggage. You want some Sharpies to write on said print files. You'll need some gloves so you don't get your greasy fingers on your film negatives, because no one wants some greasy film negatives. At least I don't think you do, unless you're going for a new or artistic style. And you'll need some blue handled scissors, specifically blue. So after you cut your negatives, you'll obviously want to put them in a safekeeping sleeve from print file. So back in the day, I got the wrong ones. Don't get the wrong ones, get these ones. So I'm gonna tell you the ones. Are you ready? Write it down. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Style number 120 for UB. That is the 120 print file archival sleeve that I use for 120. It's perfect for 35. I'm gonna tell you the one that you want. Don't get any other ones unless they're better than this one, but I don't think they are. The style number is 356HB. I'll put that down in the description below so you so you, so you don't forget, um, but you should have been taking notes. And uh, so there you go. Depending on the project, I have multiple binders. If I have a project in mind, like Route 66, I have one binder for all of Route 66. But if it's not a project and it's just me willy-nilly shooting around, I put it in one specific folder for the year. Binder for the year. Now that you have your film safe and secure in a archival sleeve and have them inside a binder of your choosing, what do you do after? You have to think of a name. And no, it can't be Chester Cheese Whiz. That doesn't tell you anything about your film negative, theoretically. And disclaimer, this is just the way I do it. There are obviously billions of ways to do this, but this is how I like to do it. So, how I label my film negatives. It goes by date, by camera type, then by what I'm shooting. Real quick, that's what I wanna know. I wanna know when I took it, I wanna know what camera it came from, and I wanna know the type. Now, I choose to label my film the date I actually take the photo, just because that is how I like to keep track in my brain and on the computer. Some people, when they get it back from the lab or when they develop it, that's when they do the date, but to me, that doesn't really help me know when and where I took it. It's just a date that I developed. So, that's why I like to do the actual day of shooting, which can be hard if you get a roll back several months later. But, usually, you're using your phone at the same time, and so I usually just take a photo on my iPhone and then I know, oh, how's that Laguna Beach on the 5th of December? And then I can label my film from Laguna Beach the 5th of December. So this is how we do it. You ready? Let's just go back in time a little bit. So if it is December 5th, 2020, I label my film 12.05.2020. Boom, that's my date. I like underscores, it's very visual. What did I shoot it on? I shot it on the Mamiya. Now, I don't always write the name completely out like Mamiya 7. Boom, Mam 7. Underscore, what did I shoot? Lomo purple. Lomo purple. Sweet, how many rolls did I take? Well, I do like to keep chronicle logical order on all my film. So, if it was the first roll from Laguna Beach, I'm gonna say 01. Now, if I took multiple Lomo purples that day, 
I'll have an O2 and an O3. That's a lot of Loma purple. So I will put this label right here on my print file. Now, say I took uh, the same day, I did uh, 1205 2020 MAM 7, and then I was like, actually, I shot E100 underscore 01 because it was the first E100. Boom, there you go. So this is how I label my film, both in the computer and on my archival sleeve. Date, camera, film, roll. Sometimes, like for Route 66, I actually put another thing in there. I did the project. So I did date, project, then camera, then film, then the number the roll on that day. I always start over on a new day. That way in the computer, you will know what day you shot when. Bada bang, bada bye, bada ba boom. But now that you gave this baby a name, it's time to watch it grow and blossom. So let's go to the computer and take these files and organize them. Computer time. But you know what you can also do at the computer? Learn. So let me tell you about today's sponsor. Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community that can offer you a bunch of different classes. Classes for furthering your creative journey. One class that was super fun to take was a class by Nina Rycroft on how to draw human heads from every single angle. And this class helped me get my perspectives in check. And the great thing is that some of the classes are less than an hour. So why don't you dive in so you can learn how to draw some heads, shoulders, knees, and toes. And the hot fudge on top of the Skillshare Sunday is that there are no ads. So your creative juices can continue to flow while you binge your favorite lessons. I mean, sure. You could always be watching Netflix, but wouldn't you rather learn something? For the first thousand people who use a link in the description below will receive a one month trial to Skillshare's premium membership. So what are you waiting for? Now's a chance to learn how to crochet. I mean, crocheting a cute camera? That'd be cool. Back at it. Now they're at the computer, we can start organizing our files in the digital space. So let's get into it. First things first, let's download all that, uh, that sweet footage from the SD card. Boom. So I'll demonstrate by showing you some photos from Route 66. This is the hard drive where I keep all of my files. And then I also do back them up on another hard drive because I'm anal. Lightroom photos where I keep my Lightroom pictures and projects. And then I have photos, which comprises all of the photos that I currently have on this hard drive. Now, as you'll see, well, this right here, this was this is the dark ages. These This was the dark ages where I just didn't know what I was doing. I was labeling things like clouds. Cloud, there's a folder of clouds. But then I started getting smarter and broke them out into different folder structures like a one digital. It's my digital shots that I never take, so don't worry, I never take them. Then I have drone shots, drone images, O2. Then I got Polaroid, so anything that I digitize Polaroid with. And then four by five, 35 millimeter and 120 scans. The reason that these don't have O1s, O2s, or O3s attached to them is because I started in the in the dark ages before I actually was, you know, organized. So it's okay. But inside I get organized. Don't you worry about it. So every single one of these folders right here, these are the main folders. All of these are labeled and organized the same way inside of them. I go by date. So I started this in 2018 and all I do, I just have the months. And obviously you can see I didn't take a photo in February in 2018 and that was a very sad month even though it was my birthday. Feel bad for me. I create these folder structures and I just duplicate them anytime I start a new year. In this case, I have some 120 that we're gonna be organizing right now. So go to 2021 and then go into April because April is when I went to Route 66 with Jason. Just drag your file from your SD cards and go boop and throw them in there. So we'll label this folder with the correct name. 04, I knew I took it on the 28th, 28, 2021 underscore, shot this with the Mamiya seven on E100. And this was the first slide film that I took of the day. So that right there is my folder structure name. So for me, I also like to copy this name and then I right click, I rename all the files so that they all have the same name as the folder. I don't know how to do this on Windows because I don't own Windows. So if you have Windows, you're just, you're out of luck. I'm sure you can do it. I don't know how to do it but someone knows how to do it, but we're not done. Cause I'm gonna show you a few things. I'm gonna show you a thing or two in, in the light room. G to go back to your gallery view. Uh, these are previously imported. I haven't finished some of them. These are awesome. Like this one of my sister right here. Doesn't she look like a badass? 
Doesn't this look like someone that's just like, I own my own company. What's up? Mm, girl power. Inside Lightroom, I also like to be organized by date. So that means usually you have to update the date's metadata. I wanna make sure that when I import these files, they stay in chronological order, just like my film negatives inside the binders. And because I scan these a month later, they won't have the right timestamp. So if you select all your files, go up to metadata, edit capture time, then you just put in your date. So 04, 28, 2021. I think I took this around, uh, it was sunset-ish. So probably around 6.30. I do like to put in the time, it's probably not important, but if I'm going day by day and I wanna know when I took a roll, if I took one before or after, it's vaguely in that order inside Lightroom. So now I know, oh, well I took these shots after I took these shots. I don't know, I'm kinda crazy. I like to be organized. I like to know where all my files are at and I like to do it on the day of just because that's how I live life day by day, moment by moment. Hanging on a moment with you. There we go. I'm not gonna get into the ins and outs of how I use and operate Lightroom all that much. I wanted to go through the organization aspects of this whole process. Cause this, it's boring, but like, it's kind of necessary. You like need to do it. Unless you just like to fly by the seat of your pants and say, Does he, I don't know, look at the negatives of the shoebox. Look at the negatives of the shoebox. I don't know where they're at, but they're in the shoebox somewhere. Now I'm gonna throw this back to you. How do you guys like to organize your files? Shoebox? Refrigerator? Do you let your cat eat them all? Well, that will do it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you found it enlightening and you know, you learned a thing or two. Sorry about the background. It's a mess. It's a, it's a pure mess. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is just this hot garbage behind me and uh, it makes me sad every day. Why can't you be in your place? But you know what? They're all times and things. And th things and time? Time and things. Who knows? I'll check you in the next one. Bye.